Good morning, dear friends. Brothers and sisters, I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. The Lord has graciously given you and me another day to live. It is His mercy. And so let us live our lives for His glory and lift up His name. And therefore, before we begin the activities of today, let us be quiet for just a few minutes and listen to the voice of the Lord, speaking to us gently, revealing to us His plan and His desires for us. Today's meditation is taken from the letter of Paul to Philippians, chapter 4, verses 1 to 4. And there, the, the, you know, the three times in the first four verses, of this chapter, the words in the Lord appear. There are three commandments Paul gives in the Lord. And before we get into this, let me read this passage for you. Therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown. And that is how you should stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. I plead with Yoria and I plead with the Syndicate to agree with each other in the Lord. Yes, I ask you, loyal York fellow, help these women who have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all. The Lord is near. I said there are three commandments for us to obey in the Lord. The number one is stand fast in the Lord. Stand fast. This phrase, stand fast, is used for a soldier standing fast in the shock of battles, with the enemy standing around him. It is, to, it is easy to do uh, the wrong thing in the company of some people. At the same time, there are those in whose company it is easy for us to do the right thing. Is it not true that when we look back, there were times we took a wrong turn, and that wrong turn caused us to pay very dearly, and we regret it later because we suffered. We say, if only so-and-so had been there, it would never have happened. Our only safety against temptation is to be in the Lord. And that is what Paul is emphasizing here. You can be safe from all temptations and attacks of the enemy of our soul only if we are in the Lord. You remember Jesus emphasizing this truth. If you want to bear fruit for God's glory, you have to be an abiding branch. Abide in the vine. And that is the same thought here. If you want to be safe, abide and stand fast in the Lord. As believers, we can stand fast only when we stand in Christ. Christ stood fast and defeated our enemies. He had to shed his blood. And my friends, the blood of Jesus Christ is the greatest fear of Satan. Because Satan has no answer.
to the blood of Jesus Christ, it is so powerful that it protects us from all enemy attacks. And that is why it is important for us to plead the blood of Jesus Christ every day as we get set out of life. Let the blood of Jesus Christ applied around us, around our houses, dwelling places, around our children, around our family. The blood of Jesus Christ provide us that protection. And the second thing, the commandment that we need to obey in the Lord is agree in the Lord. In verse 2, in Philippi, there were two prominent women in the church and they had quarrels. Paul urges the church to intervene and bring peace between these two women. Suppose our life, let me ask you this question. Suppose our life was to be summed up in one word. What would that word be? Clement, whom uh, uh, Paul mentions in this passage, goes down in history as a peacemaker. He will be known as the peacemaker. But Yodia and Syntyche, these two women who were quarreling, go down as peace breakers. Suppose we were to go down uh, into history with one thing known about us, what would that one thing be? Think about it. Many people are known as, oh, he was a deceiver. He was a big pretender. He was a big cheat. And uh, he didn't mean whatever he said. But there are so many others who would say, he was a friend of everybody. He loved people. And he helped people. He was a great help. He was a comfort to so many people. For anyone in trouble, he was always there. So in one word, we will be known by one word. What would be that word? What would be our legacy when we leave the scene of this world? How the devil would like to see us quarreling, divided, unforgiving, entertain bitterness, and um, look for opportunities to criticize. And one of the ways the devil does it is through gossip. And the purpose of gossip, what is the purpose of gossip? The purpose of gossip is to create a bad and a negative impression about a brother or sister. That is the purpose. There is no other purpose. In verse 8 of the same chapter, Paul urges that followers of Christ must protect themselves from this sin. Now, I encourage you to read after this meditation, Psalm number 45, verses 1 and 2. These two verses describe the lips and tongues and the mouth of a righteous person. The blessings that that person can bring forth by using our tongue. This is very important. How can you protect your tongue and lips from pollution. You know, Isaiah once cried out in the book of Isaiah chapter 6 when he had that vision of God, Holy One. He cried out, Woe unto me! I, my lips are unclean and I live among people who have unclean lips. And my brothers and sisters, 
let us guard our lips from being polluted and become unclean. You know what is the best thing to do when you don't see anything good to talk about a person? The best thing to do then is to be quiet. And tomorrow we will talk about how to deal with gossipers successfully. But today you began to practice or you begin to practice to control your tongue and keep your lips from speaking evil. Ask this question, who is in control of my life? Who is control in my lips? Who is in control of my tongue? Who is in control of my decisions and desires? My plans. There are three forces. Satan, self, and God. Now, out of these three, who really is in control? As long as Satan is in control, you are ruined. You are destroyed. That is his plan. And as long as you are in control, you are selfish. And that is how you become proud and arrogant. And that will be for your destruction. And that is why it is always good for us to hand over our lives to the Lordship of Jesus. Let him have a hold of us and let him be in control of our lips and our tongues and and I pray that all of us will enjoy a life today, a life of overcoming, victorious and fruitful, and a blessing to others. This is my prayer. And I pray in the name of Jesus that as you go forward, facing your day, facing your needs and problems, you will trust the Lord that you will keep yourself free from the evil one. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Bless my brothers and sisters and my children. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. This is a great day. And have a wonderful day ahead of you. Amen.